Hey guys, TikTok Sully here, or just Sully, back with another video. And today I want to bring you guys a video on what happened in fashion and street style in the month of May. This is going to be a new series I'll be starting on my channel, where I'll be going over what happened in fashion in the previous month. So with it being June, in this episode we'll be looking at what happened in May and highlighting some of the exciting things you may have missed. Nowadays fashion moves fast, much like music, and there's always something new happening. So in this series I will only be mentioning things I think are worth highlighting, otherwise I'll be talking for like half an hour, which I wouldn't enjoy and I'm sure you wouldn't either. So with that, let's get into it and hope you guys enjoy. Kicking it off, we can start with Palace Skateboards, as they released their summer collection at the beginning of the month, which featured a range of outerwear, t-shirts and more. This released on May 4th, and the drops were split into four separate drops throughout the month in order to make it fair for consumers to get the pieces they wanted. You can check out the full range on their website, as there is still some sizes in various pieces. I'll link that down below for you to check out. Moving on, we can get into the biggest event of the month, which of course, as we all know, is the Met Gala. Now, the Met Gala is a night created to help fundraise for the Costume Institute at the Met Museum in New York. Every year a theme is chosen that corresponds with the Costume Institute's current exhibition and this year it was entitled Heavenly Bodies, Fashion and the Catholic Imagination. Of course religious imagery already plays a big role in fashion so it was very fitting and guests had a ball with it. Highlights include Anna Wintour in Chanel, Virgil Abloh in Louis Vuitton, Ricardo Tichy in Burberry, Migos in Versace suits which was one of my favourite looks of the whole event especially with the eyes to complement the Versace prints. We also had Kendall Jenner rocking off white, Travis Scott in Alexander Wang which he matched with Kylie Jenner and finally 2 Chainz who also opted for Versace just like his ATL brothers and actually ended up proposing at the gala to his long term girl Kesha Ward who also spotted Versace. This was reminiscent of Donald Trump proposing to Melania at the Met Gala back in 2004 so history could repeat itself again and we could see 2 Chainz at the White House moving like the black George Bush in reminiscent of Chappelle. You might speak 16 languages, but you're gonna need them when you in Times Square selling fake hats. I know Gucci when I see it, nigga, I'm rich. Moving on from that, we go to Vetmon as they made news by deciding to opt out on Men's Fashion Week once again after only returning for one season. You may have read in the past, Vetmon had left the fashion calendar in order to present their collections in a more unique and unconventional way, but they decided to return this past season of Autumn Winter 18 and show on the runway again. But just a season later of Spring Summer 19, Demna and Vetmon decided to pull out once again and instead show their Spring Summer collection during Couture Week, which commences in July. Next up, we have another announcement, this time coming from Comde Garçon and Ray Kawaku, as they decided to launch yet another diffusion line for the Comme des Garçons brand being CDG. CDG will be a logo driven brand and will concentrate on pieces where logos play a big role in such as t-shirts, jackets and trainers. The first collection is entitled Breaking News and features some iconic pieces that are reminiscent of the Comme des Garçons archive such as the Parker and Bomber. It will also feature some bright graphic t-shirts which will give the consumer some variety when it comes to graphic prints and not only have them being restricted to the play logo. CDG drops in July on their website which is currently being designed by Ray Kawakubo and will later roll out in October of 2018 to formally introduce the brand to its market. Another brand that dropped in May was Yeezy as they dropped season 6 on their Yeezy supply website after teasing it through social media. This drop stayed true to the brand's aesthetic as the pieces were a variety of pastel and wash colours that we've seen in previous collections. There was a variety of unisex hoodies classic t-shirts, prints for women, and a favourite of mine being the nylon slipper which seemed to be very well crafted and easy to wear. I also like the stitching detail on an otherwise completely plain sandal, and with sandals seeming to trend in more of a mainstream market, it seemed to be the perfect release to add to their sixth season. The whole collection is available on the Yeezy Supply website which I'll link down below for you guys to check out. Moving on to some more widespread news, we come to the Royal Wedding. This was a big event in the political world which really didn't concern me or others like me, but a highlight of this event, which I'm sure anyone who's a fan of design can appreciate, was the dress worn by the bride Meghan Markle. Claire White Keller for Givenchy, who is currently the artistic director at the brand, designed this dress. And I'm sure this commission brought a lot of positive attention to the brand in return. I thought I'd mention this because it only ever happened once every decade. And being able to design such an elegant dress would have been a great accomplishment for Claire White Keller as well as Givenchy. Nicola Gesquier also made news as he renewed his contract for Louis Vuitton women's wear and will continue to design for that 
last side of the brand whilst Virgil Abloh takes care of the men's west side of things. Nicholas showed a strong resort collection preceding this news and I'm sure there was joy on that side of fashion as Nicola has done a great job on Louis Vuitton women's wear and I'm sure will continue to do so. But moving on to a more familiar name we have Matthew Williams of Elite Studios. As near the end of the month of May he announced some pretty sudden news and took to Instagram to debut the new name for the Adix brand being 1017 Adix 9SM. Now this was pretty surprising and caught many including me off guard but with Adix being a fairly new brand the sooner Matthew Williams went ahead with this change the better and the fact that the brand name still has Adix in it the change shouldn't be too burdensome to the brand. The purpose of such a change is to explore how labels convey values, how unique identities are formed and how to achieve longevity to put in Matthew Williams' words. And the numerical figures in the new brand name represent Matthew Williams' birthday being October 17th and the address of Adix's first studio in New York City. This change could be seen to be influenced by what Ralph Simmons did at Calvin Klein as the brand name over there is similar, being Calvin Klein 205W39NYC and follows the same pattern of the headquarters location being encoded into the brand name. Either way, it seems very fitting for Alix and I'm sure we'll continue to see the technical stuff we've seen come out of the Alix brand. And if you want to read the full statement on the name change, I'll also leave that in the description. Alix will debut as 1017 Alix 9SM for its Spring Summer 19 collection. Next, we come to Streetwear Leader Supreme as they received a cease and desist in the month of May following the attempt of releasing some alphabet pieces that were part of the Spring Summer collection. These pieces featured famous French artist Erte's alphabet suite work on them, which took the artist in question 40 years to complete. And I'm sure the House of Erte didn't appreciate Supreme running away with it for a mere seasonal collection and ended up contacting them to cease and desist before releasing the collection in its entirety. There hasn't been a formal complaint released to the public, but the pieces were removed from Supreme's website and lookbook, which indicates to a cease and desist being presented to them as reflected of previous cease and desist, which I'm sure, as you know, Supreme are not at all a stranger to. I believe the shirt, silk pants and vase dropped, with the beach towel and shorts being removed. And I'm sure that's not the last season this is for Supreme, but it sure is the latest one. And the final piece of news for the month of May finishes off on May 31st, as on this date, Louis Vuitton debuted their first ever men's fragrance, which released in five cents. The flavors consist of Limon City, which is made up of ginger, brightened by the bitterness of grapefruit, and softened by an added amber for a fresh and sporty scent. Nuru Mound, which is made up of raw cocoa bean and a rare oud, finished with a spicy saffron to produce a wood-like fragrance. Uraj, which inhabits the patchouli plant and the iris plant to create an earthy essence. Sularu, which is a fresh and sunny scent consisting of citrus lemon, orange extras, grassy greens, and finished with a cedar accent for a fruity flavor. And finally, Uwazad, which is made up of musk, sandalwood, and a disruptive cardamom to give this fragrance a spicy zest. All of these fragrances are available on the Louis Vuitton website and retail £485 or $240. Moving on to sneakers now to finish up this episode, we have a variety of releases including some hype sneakers that released in the month of May. I thought I'd add a separate segment for sneakers to this series as they live in their own world and have their own attraction and subculture. So with that, we begin with the Shattered Backboard Jordan 1's in a Saturn release to kick off the month of May, which dropped as a women's sneaker and only released in women's sizes. This was dismaying to the male demographic as the Shattered Backboard is definitely one of the most sought after Jordan 1 models and a Saturn version would have only made it that much better. Thankfully, the size is translated up to a men's UK 9.5, US 10.5, so some males were able to fit into the sneaker and still managed to rock it without worrying too much about it being a women's shoe. The next sneaker is also a Jordan 1, this time the best hand in the game collection, which featured four different colorways made up of suede material to add yet another variation to the Jordan 1 model. These released in a yellow suede, a track red, blue moon, and finally a clay green suede to give collectors a pack to try and secure. Visbin retro the famous FBT shoe using a vegetarian approach if you will as they released the iconic colorways in this silhouette with vegetable suede being used to complete the suede upper. This shoe is complete with a vibram sole to make for a more environmentally friendly sneaker that will not only appeal to a more conscious consumer but are also built tougher in the fact that vegetable suede was used due to its toughness and ability to keep its shape. The Visbim FBT is now available and retails 
for £650, $800 depending on the stockist. Off-White is another brand with some new footwear as they released a new low top design to compete with the popular Van silhouette. The brand stayed true to their aesthetic and released three colorways in a vulcanized low top that had very similar attributes to the 10 Virgil released earlier in time with Nike. Which brings me to the next sneaker being the Converse Off-White which finally dropped in May after being held back from releasing with the other 10 silhouettes. It was probably because this was the only non-Nike branded sneaker so it made sense and this was also a vulcanized remaster this time of the classic converse chuck taylor resale is pretty high on these so if you looked out that will probably be the only option another sneaker that off-white dropped in may was the third colorway in the jordan 1 collaboration which was a rendition of the unc model this followed the previously released all white and original chicago renditions and had a surprise drop on the sneakers app but only in america and are still due to officially release on the 23rd of june so if you looked out hopefully you managed to grab them on the official release moving to rick Owens now, this brand had a collaboration with Birkenstock to drop some more slipper silhouettes for the brand and what better way to do it than to collaborate with Birkenstock who have a heritage in slippers and footwear. Releasing multiple pairs made up of a variety of materials such as long hair cow fur, felt, suede and leather. A few pairs are still available on the Rick Owens and Birkenstock websites so if you are interested I'll link that down below for you to check out. Skepta was another figure that dropped a collaboration in May, this time with Nike as he dropped his second silhouette with the brand to produce a white Air Max BW97 with contrasting red and blue swooshes for each foot. This one was just as popular as the first collaboration which was an Air Max 97 and the 97 seems to be a favourite for Skepta as he took the sole of that shoe and merged it with the BW for the second release. Nike he also had another collaboration, this time with acronym on the Vapor Max silhouette which was entitled Thirsty Bandit. This time the silhouette had brown and green hues matched with an orange heel tab for yet another eccentric design in the acronym and Nike collaborations and of course another instant sellout as this has also been a popular collaboration similarly to Skepta's. Nike brand also dropped a jaw on 11 near the end of the month which was named the cap and gown model and this was made up of a triple black colour scheme with a blue tinted outsole to give the shoe some contrast and was a nice and clean colourway that I would say was very appealing to fans of the Jordan 11. And that brings us to the final release of the month which is from Mesa Margiela as they attempted to produce yet another silhouette to inject into the popular dad sneaker market. This time it was the security sneaker which I thought had a very fitting name as it imitated a security guard aesthetic with its chunky sole and blacked out colorway and a security guard could probably get away with wearing it on the job if he wanted to but more than likely it'll be inherited by fashion because after all it is Mesa Margiela. It has some branding on the right heel to make sure you don't get it twisted and these are available from various retailers which I'll be sure to link in the description. Which brings me to the end of this episode of what happened in fashion in May. Let me know down below if you gravitated towards any of the items mentioned or even if you managed to pick any of them up and hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of this series and you're happy with this series. Let me know down below if you want me to continue as I aim to keep you up to date with this fast world that is fashion. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, it's TikTok solely for everything. So I'll also leave that in the description. And if you did enjoy, don't forget to hit that like button. It always helps and is much appreciated. If you're new here and you're not subscribed and you're interested in fashion, then you should also subscribe by clicking over here. I do have some more videos like this on the way and I'll just allow you to stay up to date with the uploads. But that's all from me today. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. What about people who say you're only interested in the Middle East for oil? What? Huh? Oil? Who said something about oil, bitch? You cooking? <laughs>